Welcome to Not My Reality. I'm your host, Vince Stradamus. In this one, we're going to take a look at a couple of very sick men who were the loose inspiration for many horror films like Psycho, Silence of the Lambs, and the classic Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Let's take a look at the true stories that kind of inspired these movies. If you don't have a sense of humor, go. Welcome. Is this my reality? Is this your reality? Did you know? Did you know that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is based loosely on real events and draws inspiration from notorious serial killers like Ed Gein and Elmer Wayne Henley. The film intentionally presented itself as a true story to attract a wider audience and to explore cultural and political discussions of the 70s. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre draws inspiration from several real life events inspired by much of the violence featured on the news. Toba Hooper specifically credits Ed Gein and Elmer Wayne Henley as the influence for Leatherface. And the true story of this serial killer is perhaps even more disturbing than the Texas Chainsaw Massacre itself. Ed Gein. Ed Gein was known as the Plainfield Butcher. The biggest inspiration behind the Texas Chainsaw Massacre's events is the story of serial killer Ed Gein, whose crimes shocked an entire nation in the 1950s. Known as the Plainfield Ghoul, Ed had a history of wearing women's clothes and mutilating corpses, displaying distinct ties to the final version of Leatherface's character. Gein he also exhumed corpses from local graveyards. And get this, he fashioned trophies and keepsakes from their bones and skin, and confessed to killing at least two women. Authorities discovered that he'd exhumed corpses from local graveyards and fashioned keepsakes from their bones and skin. It's also thought that Gian murdered his brother Henry, 43, who allegedly died as a result of a fire but he had massive head trauma. Some think this was Ed's first kill, his Cain and Abel moment. After Gein was arrested, a search of his house revealed, get this, whole human bones and fragments, a wastebasket made of human skin, human skin covering several chairs, skulls on his bedpost, female skulls, some with the top sewn off, bowls made from human skulls. He had a corset made from a female torso, the skin from the shoulders to the waist. Leggings made from, of course, human leg skin. He had masks made from skin of female heads. Mary Hogan's face mask in a paper bag. He had Mary Hogan's skull in a box. He had Bernice Warden's entire head in a burlap sack. He had Bernice Warden's heart in a plastic bag in front of Gian's potbelly stove. What's he gonna do with that? He had nine vulva, or vulvae, pardon me, in a shoebox. He had a young girl's dress in the bulbas of two females judged to have been about 15 years old. A belt made from female human nipples, four noses, a pair of lips on a window shade drawing, a lampshade made from the skin of a human face, fingernails from female fingers, a female human nipple doorbell. Cannot make this shit up. Gian, he admitted to stealing from nine graves but it seems like it's a way more than that. He also admitted to two murders and he's suspected 
and at least seven others. Guillen died at the Mendota Mental Health Institute due to respiratory failure, secondary to lung cancer, on July 26, 1984. He lived to be 77. This got to live to be 77. Guillen's story has had a long lasting effect on American pop culture. Guillen served as the inspiration for a myriad of fictional serial killers. Most notably, Norman Bates from Psycho, Leatherface, like we mentioned, from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs, Garland Green from Con Air, and the character Dr. Oliver Thredson in the TV series American Horror Story Asylum. There was another infamous killer who helped influence the writing of Leatherface. His name, Elmer Wayne Henley. Henley was an accomplice of one of America's most brutal serial killers, known as the Candyman, Dean Coral, who he met when he was just 15 years old. Between 1970 and 1973, Elmer Wayne Henley Jr. helped the Candyman, Dean Coral, kidnap, R and murder, at least 28 boys, six of them who Henley killed himself. Their murderous spree ultimately came to an end on August 8, 1973, when Henley brought two of his friends, Tim and Rhonda, to Coral's home to allegedly party. Henley somehow finally snapped and fatally shot Coral. Soon afterward, Henley called the police to confess to all that he had done. Interesting. While Henley took full responsibility for helping Coral, he showed little remorse for any of the actual crimes. He said, quote, my only regret is that Dean isn't here now, so I could tell him what a good job I did of killing him, end quote. Ed Gein and Elmer Wayne Henley, two American serial killers who loosely inspired some of our most beloved horror characters. Two creepy ass mother, if you ask me. I mean, great for a horror movie, but I don't want to run into these kids in real life. Leave a comment down below. Let's get the fuck out of here. I heard he got a sale on chainsaws. See you there. <laughs>